me to read 2 Corinthians chapter 8. <clears throat> Generosity encouraged. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, <clears throat> entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints, and they did not do as we expected. But they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also the com to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. <clears throat> I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich." And here is my advice about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. One des our, <clears throat> our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much did not have too much and he who gathered little did not have too little wow he is talking he brought it all the way back to exodus <clears throat> during the time where um moses um and the people were um god was given the manna and they were to go and gather as much as they decided and so the ones that gathered a lot didn't have too much and the ones that gathered too little didn't or not a whole lot didn't have too little because that's how the lord works amen and hallelujah with that and you're like how is that it's it's of god that's how there's so much here <laughs> in this chapter okay so listen to what he says here because <clears throat> there was a lot this is sermon upon sermon okay so he talks about here for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. He's talking about he is holy. He is the good shepherd. And he took on all our, our sins, which the wages of sin is death. So he died for our sins to provide us the richness of God the holiness, the fulfillment, to be able to be with him for eternity, the creator in holiness. He made it so where we are holy. We can be, we will be holy with him. That is amazing. That is wonderful. That is love. That is the Lord's love. And he continues. And looking at that, even this bringing past to present, <clears throat> We get reminders from the Holy Spirit. We get reminders from the Lord himself and his love and his great love for us. And he knows how to talk to us, too. He knows how to communicate with us. And so much so that some people try to push push him away. We've talked about that in the previous Bible study, how Jonah, how Jonah wanted to ignore and what that led to. So think about that. Think about that in your life 
how much the Lord has made us rich with his love and set us to eternity. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read about this? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think?